Does PayPal stock have room to grow in 2024? Well, in today's episode, what I want to do is take a closer look at the vast variety of growth opportunities for this fintech giant. Unfortunately, year to date, the stock is down roughly 17%. But from its October lows, the stock has pulled up over 22%. Now, before we kind of take a closer look at this episode, I just want to say Merry Christmas Eve to all that celebrate. Hope you have a great time with your family. This is going to be my first time, um, my first Merry Christmas. Christmas with my little one. So I'm super, super excited. If you don't celebrate, happy holidays. And I hope I don't take too much of your time. And hopefully you find a lot of value in this episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so first, let me just start off by looking at some slides. First, we can see total payment volumes continues to grow for this overall fintech giant. So total payment volume increased 15% in the most recent quarter or 13% on foreign, no, neutral foreign exchange. Peer-to-peer -peer total payment volume, which includes PayPal, Venmo, and Zoom, increased 4% and now represents roughly 25% of total payment volume. If we just look at Venmo itself, that was up 7% to $68 billion. We're also seeing that the branded checkout total payment volume, which is when you see PayPal checkout here, increased 6%. Now they do mention their... Uh, payments platform um, from their unbranded processing, which is mainly Braintree, accelerated sequentially, growing 32%. So we are seeing a huge growth in total payment volume in everything from their branded to unbranded to peer-to-peer -peer and their kind of Venmo platform. Outside of that, even though on the negative side, we are seeing active accounts down quarter over quarter, and I do believe year over year, we are seeing an increase in transactions per active users. Uh, so that bodes well. It means that the company is building more engagement and they have seen a nice amount of transactions also increase. Process transactions were up 11% versus a year ago. Uh, so overall, we are still seeing that there is uh, a return factor here for PayPal users. There is kind of a use case and we are seeing that kind of activity increase per active users. The final thing I want to show you before before we look at the growth opportunities, remember, this isn't even scenario one. These are just some slides that I think every investor of PayPal or anyone that's curious about PayPal would want to see. So PE ratio currently is 18.4. PE ratio forward is 12.4 and forward one year is 11. Uh, I, I mean, for a fintech giant, I, I think this is looking pretty crazy cheap. Um, but those are just my overall thoughts. Maybe you might have others in the comments below. Uh, so now scenario one, right? So I, I'm going to take a closer look at scenarios in today's episode of how PayPal can grow this upcoming year. And first is their expansion in the consumer segment market. And at the end of the day, what's really important and for PayPal is transactions, right? That's pretty much where the transactions are happening. So how um, PayPal can obviously grow in this market is first, what they mentioned is they are revamping the checkout process, making it more user-friendly, making it more efficient, reducing the friction. When you do reduce the friction, that leads to higher conversion rates and increased user satisfaction. And that's something that they've been working on. For example, one of the, my favorite reasons to use PayPal is once I signed in already, it's very easy for me to use PayPal and PayPal again. I don't have to go through this crazy, crazy sign up signing process all over again. I don't have to look for my credit card or anything like that. So I really do enjoy the PayPal method right now. The other thing is they are doing cross product synergies, and this is something they're trying to improve. For example, they are expecting to enhance their synergies with PayPal, with Venmo, with Cashback MasterCard, right? Their, their overall credit card solution as well. And the more they kind of create these synergies together, I do believe it's going to increase their overall user experience and is going to increase the amount of transactions we see um, of people using their platform. Uh, in terms of innovative products, to some extent, we've seen the PayPal cash, Cashback MasterCard and obviously offering some form of cashback rewards has increased transaction volumes and users of these cards tend to make more purchases using PayPal. If we continue to see offerings like that, that's obviously going to bode well for the consumer. 
consumer market. Then we see PayPal Rewards, which has already seen substantial use and further innovation here can drive additional engagement. I, I know, for example, every time I use PayPal, it's like, hey, use it for 10 more times, nine more times, and then we're going to give you some form of reward. So it creates that incentives for me to stay with that brand loyalty. Um, now, obviously, they are expanding that Venmo reach with kind of uh, uh, now Venmo team. So obviously, this is starting that loyalty among younger customers. Uh, and I do believe that's going to bode well, because once you kind of stick to a wallet to some extent, I do believe that business is very, very sticky. And then again, broadening the use case of Venmo, right? Venmo is expanding for more than just peer to peer payments to include more financial services. We also seen kind of the peer to peer group um, group where if you go out to eat with a big group, you can split up the, uh, the check evenly using Venmo. So obviously, they do have numerous opportunities here to grow in the consumer segment. Now, scenario two is just brand loyalty remains strong in 2024 plus global expansion. And I do believe this is going to most likely be the case. They already do have high penetration rates during the most recent earnings. They mentioned that roughly 70% of the adult population in the United States has used PayPal in the past five years or so or some form of support from them. And I think that is insane. So the company mentions with this kind of extensive reach, um, they, they really want to penetrate more into this market. Now, I do want to say thank you for the support, guys. We're trying. I, I mean, one of my goals was to hit 30,000 by the end of the year. I don't think that's the case. We only have six days left and I still need 900 subs. But regardless, let's see if we can get it. Thumbs up, subscribe button. If you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, a completely off topic from this video, click join to learn more. Weekly exclusive videos there. Special offer at fool.com slash Jose and free newsletter at Jose Nahar. Carl.substack.com. Now, scenario three is growth with small businesses. And again, if you are a PayPal shareholder, you must already know about PayPal Complete Payments. Uh, for those that are not familiar, PayPal Complete Payment is designed to help small business kind of sell globally, accept a wide range of payments, uh, including obviously all of PayPal solutions. And they also have other integrated solutions in there to help kind of a small business start from scratch. Uh, one of the great things about this is obviously you're using PayPal's data. So you can really grow from here in the small business by being, hey, look, you're a small business. We can obviously help you with these kind of payment solution platform. But the most important thing is you're going to be utilizing PayPal's data. So by leveraging this vast amount of data that PayPal processes on a daily, uh, on a daily basis, small businesses can gain insight into consumer behavior, helping them optimize their sales strategies, and also making a more personalized shopping experience for a specific customer. So being able to be a small business and have that amount of data can definitely be beneficial. The company is also expanding services they're offering here for small businesses. They're going beyond the payment processing. This includes solutions for common operational challenges like inventory management, logistics, customer relations management. They're also doing things like managing cash flow, access to capital. If you are a small business, maybe looking to a loan, online store integration. And more recently, the most recently that I've heard is they're enhancing merchant services. Uh, for example, one of the most recent is they're implementing package tracking. And you might be like, Jose, why package tracking? Well, which packing tracking, right? You they, they have shown a significant reduction in disputes and have improved merchant protection. Uh, so obviously this helps kind of grow more market opportunity and more market share here with small business. So scenario three is growth with small businesses. Now scenario four, we're going to go to the other side of the spectrum here and enterprise growth, right? This is the big players. And here again, if you are a PayPal shareholder, you must have heard about it. And that is Braintree. Braintree has a establish yourself as this huge payment platform for large enterprises processing significant payment volumes. They have big clientele like Adobe, Booking, DoorDash, Ticketmaster, and Uber. Uh, and just like they're doing with the small business here in the big businesses, they're going beyond payment processing. For example, they're doing things like 
foreign exchange solutions, which are very, very relevant for large enterprises, things like fraud management, chargeback automation, and other payout services like that. And some of these solutions, right, while PayPal might already have a huge market share in the payment service platform, what they don't have a huge market share, for example, would be in like the fraud management, would be in that foreign exchange freight solutions that I just mentioned. And just the ability, since they already have that reach, the ability to get into those markets and those have additional services that can overall improve the margins that this company has, uh, which obviously sees a nice potential profit increase. Now, scenario number five is AI driven opportunities uh, and AI driven is it, it's not. I'm not going to talk about kind of generative AI or large language models, but they do have a lot of data that PayPal kind of collects on a daily basis. So for example, AI power recommendations, something we see a lot with like Meta, with shopping platforms where PayPal can offer highly personalized shopping recommendations to their customer experience, increasing the amount of transactions and obviously bodes well for PayPal. Uh, obviously, another thing is they do have that reward programs, those offering programs. And with AI, they can enable PayPal to tailor its rewards strongly to the customer. Harry, this person uses this a lot let's make it an incentive for him to get this reward so like that we know he's going to get more tractions another one is something we've seen with a lot of fintech giants is they use ai for things like protective uh predictive fraud analysis uh and then like i mentioned these large data sets can be used for a vast of opportunities both for small medium businesses like we saw and also the large enterprise players now scenario six is new management and obviously this could be seen as a bearish case but on the bullish side a uh, new management scenario and we'll talk about all the leadership changes that they've had and kind of implemented within the last few months or so uh, but often new leaders bring a fresh perspective especially to this fintech market which is now a huge kind of ever-growing space uh, in digital payments and peer-to-peer -peer and other financial or markets opportunities so new leaders can obviously bring a new fresh uh, new fresh outlook and kind of change the culture of the of the industry um, the other, uh, so one of the biggest change is the new CEO. So the new CEO is now James Chris. He has recently taken over as the CEO succeeding Dan. And prior to PayPal, he actually served as the executive vice president and general manager of Intuit's small business and self-employed group responsible for more than half of Intuit's total revenue. So we can definitely see that the new CEO, in, just from his prior experience, most likely has that growth mentality in mind, which I actually am pretty excited about PayPal. Um, the other big change is Jamie Miller, which is now the CFO. Uh, she's now the CFO of PayPal starting on November 6, 2023 was her official date. And she comes from being previous CFO of Ernst & Young. Ernst & Young, I believe it's called EY. Now, outside of those two major changes, we've actually seen in on November 15th that they announced executive leadership changes as well. Uh, for example, we did see Isabel Cruz joined as the EVP of Chief uh, People Officer. We see Michelle Gill or Gill joined as the EVP of Small Businesses and Financial Service Groups. And we see Diego Scotti appointed as the Consumer Group and Global Marketing and Communications. And all of these people come with some great great background. For example, Ms. Cruz comes from being pretty much in the same position at Walmart, right? Which is really great. Uh, Scotty comes with this huge market. He's going to be doing a lot of the communication and marketing. He comes actually from Verizon where he was the EVP and chief marketing officer there. Now, I am pretty excited about Michelle. And the main reason is she actually comes from Intuit um, as well, which is where the CEO came. So I'm pretty sure the CEO knows her really well and is pretty excited to have her and the team. She also used to work at SoFi. Uh, so we are seeing this big change in the company. And I do believe it's really getting to start on that growth phase. But I do believe these are six reasons PayPal can grow dramatically in 2024. And if not in 2024, at least for the long term of things, I am bullish. I am a shareholder. I hope uh, I hope all this was uh, was helpful and did provide some great information for you guys. So take care. Have a good day and see you next time.